Hi guys, welcome to my video on the Kai MPC-1. Today I'm going to show you how to build a 12 bar slow blues, kind of a jam loop that you can play guitar over. Specifically, we're going to create a drum track, a bass guitar track, and an organ track, all with the Akai MPC-1 standalone box. We're not using any DAW or we're not connecting it to a computer. This video is for the absolute beginner. You don't know you don't have to know anything about this. Just take it out of the box, follow this video, and I'll get you doing something with this box. All right, here we go. In the first part of this video, I'm going to introduce the box to you, and we're going to find where the SD card lives and where the internal hard drive lives, and we're going to help you navigate around, kind of on our way to setting up our 12-bar slow blues jam program here. So step one, turn it on. I'll flash a picture of the front of this box up now. Uh, on the right there is a place where you stick the power cord in. There's an on and off button. There are MIDI in and outs. There are some other outputs we're not going to get into, but there's a main left and a main right or main left and right output. I have this into the left output. I believe it's the left. Uh, it's quarter inch. It's going to a little JBL charge for speaker I have so we can hear what I'm doing. There is a little knob which crazily is placed on the back here. It's really hard to grab. They should have put it right here. I don't know why they would put it back here. Uh, but that's one way to control the main outs. On the front, it's really simple. There's just a slot for the SD card and there's a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And that's basically it. So, while I was talking, the start screen popped up. So when you power up the Akai MPC-1, you get this screen. And this is the only place where you can create a new project file. So you have your choice. You can hit the empty button right here, or you can go hit the, em the uh, empty button right here, empty project. So let's do that one. And this is an empty project. So this is what we're going to be working with. Uh, there's a project, we have to title that, which we'll do in a second. And then the project contains a sequence, tracked, it'll, you're probably going to have more than one tracked, and programs. So the sequence is really, I mean, this is really the song right here. In fact, I'm going to name that main. You're going to attach tracks to the sequence, specifically a drum, bass, and organ track track one, two, three will be attached to the sequence. Now the tracks won't do anything unless you assign a program to the track. For example, the drum track will get a drum program. The bass track will get a bass program and the organ track will get an organ program. Right? And we'll show you how how these buttons work here. This is a touch screen by the way so you can uh, you're used to using these. It's just a run-of-the-mill touch screen. All right, so let's talk about folders and files and new files and how to open an old file. Easier said than done, as you'll see. So to start this demo, let's just, let's name our project. Click Untitled. It takes you to this weird little in-between land screen, I call it. Can't really do much here, but there is an option to hit Save or Save As. So we can hit Save, doesn't matter which one. That'll take us to a screen that actually does something. So now we see an internal. That's our internal hard drive on this. It's recommended not to build your project folders on that because it has limited space. So they all recommend getting an SD card. So if I click on the SD card, you can see I have many folders. I've been playing with this for the whole month. And you can turn this nice little wheel here. You can hit the plus and minus buttons, move around whatever floats your boat, and yep, that's how you get around there. The SD card, by the way, here's here's one that I have in there. It's not obviously the one I have in there, but it's the same thing. So I use these uh, U3 number 10s. They're 150 megabits per second. It's a 256 gig, so it has a lot of, uh, has a lot of space on it. So throw that in the slot before you power on. So back to our project, let's, let's make a new folder in the SD card 
So there is a new folder button. Hit the new folder button. And we'll just call this, how about slow blues. We'll call it slow blues. What's the date today? It's, or what is the date today? It's one, it's, I think it's the, no, it's the 30th, 130, 21. And click do it, and now we just created a folder. Well, I don't see anything. Where's the folder? You have to look up here, and you can see SD card forward slash slow blues 13021. That's the folder we just made. It lives in the SD card. That's kind of how that works. So now let's let's make our project file. We haven't titled it yet. So this is the project file. Let's title it, and we'll title it the same thing. Slow Blues. Do it. All right. Now, I still don't see it in here. So what's the fix for that? Well, you got to hit Save. So now it takes you to that weird place again. Well, I want to make sure that I saved it. So how do you do that? You hit Save As. All right. So you can see we're in the SD card. And there's our file. There's no way to open it, which is annoying. Um, how do I know it's there? Let's go to internal. Let's go back to SD card and let's go find it. So it's 130. Um, now we called it slow. What do we call it? I forgot what we called it. Slow blues. Slow blues 13021. Double click it just to make sure it's in there. There it is. Okay, but there's no way to load it. It's because it's already loaded. So how do I go back to that project? file. Hit the main button. That'll always take you to home base. If you get lost, hit the main button. It always takes you back to our, our project. Okay, great. So we got Slow Blues Project. Now we don't have anything here. So let's name our sequence. We might as well use sequence one. Let's just name this main. How do I name this? Hit the A button. Main. Do it. Great. Now, our mission is to build a drum track, but I want to show you around first. So let's save it. Let's, let's save this. How do I save the work I've done? It's really easy. See the salmon color here? Shift. Notice that the buttons have salmon writing on the bottom and white writing on the top. So if you just click on the button, the white writing will describe what the button does. But if you click and hold shift, now the buttons will function per the salmon color. So there's save. That's how you save it. Now, how do I open a new project from here? Well, that's not too hard. I go to this little folder button right here and then new. That's going to take us back to that startup screen, which we've seen before. And then you can either hit empty project or empty project here. And there we go, a new project. Now here's the question. How do I open up the project that we are working on, that slow blues folder? You would, you would think you would just hit that, but then there's no way. How do you get to the SD card? And you might think, well, what if I go save as? Oh, look, there's the SD card. I can open it from here. Scroll down to Slow Blues. I guess I should have named it something easier. There's Slow Blues. Double click it to open it. Oh, great. There's our there's our, our file. There's our .xpj, which is our project file. But there's no way to open it. Ridiculous, Akai. It's ridiculous. So I can't open it there got to go back to main. How do I open a file that I've already worked on or folder in a file that I've worked on? You have to go to the browse button right here. It's crazy as it sounds. Then you have to go to places. Then I see the SD card. Go to SD card. Then we have to scroll all the way down. Find that slow blues. There it is. Oh, now there's an open option. So hit the open option. Oh, great. There's our slowblues.xpj. Click load. And now let's go back to home base. And yay, we got our 
uh, we got our work product back. Okay, great. So the next step, I think, is to introduce the sequence to you. So these are global controls. This controls everything underneath it. So if I have 100 tracks that I've created and attached to sequence one, this will control them. So first, let's talk about beats per minute. Texas Flood is a slow blues. It's way down there at 50 beats per minute. So I can do that, or I can double click on that, and I can punch it in 50 beats per minute if I want. Click do it. So there's a lot of different ways to, to do it. But get it to 50. Next we have the bars. So right now we're going to record a two bar loop. And I mean I could do a 12 bar loop. But this is a simple drum pattern I'm teaching you. So there's no sense in trying to go through 12 bars. When I can just make one bar and copy it 12 times. And that's basically what we're going to do with a little twist to that. But let's leave it at four for right now. Next, we have the loop function. So this will loop the bars. So it's going to start when you start playing. It's going to, the loop's going to start at bar one. When you get to the end of bar four, it's going to repeat. So it loops. If I want to just work on the fourth bar only, I can have it loop the fourth bar. And we'll still have four beats within that fourth bar. And we're actually going to do that in a little while. I always mess up. I always forget to set this back to one when I'm done working with it. And that will mess you up when you're trying to record. Even when you record, it'll stay where you're looping. Right? Uh, we already know the A button. That's how you name things. This pencil is the edit. We'll be using this quite a bit. So if I want to double the length of a bar, this is where I have one bar. I have four bars now. If I times two, I have eight bars. If I hit it again, I have 16 bars. Okay, times two. If I hit it again, I have 32 bars. So you can half the bar. If I have 10 bars and hit that, it'll decrease it to five bars. You can delete bars doing that. Um, you can erase the whole track. Uh, you can clear the track, which will take the name off and everything. So uh, this is a powerful little area. How do I get back to home base? There's an arrow there. Or I could have hit main. Okay, great. Let's talk about up here. Let's actually let this play a little bit so we can see. This tells you where the play head is. This thing moving, that's the play head or the record head. And it, there's four beats in each bar. So you see we're on bar four right now, bar four, beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four. It's going to loop back to bar one. Or actually, it's going to keep loop. Uh, why did it keep looping? Oh, because I accidentally, I didn't hit the loop function, so it didn't loop. But now it'll loop between those bar one and bar four. So that's really important when we get to the bass and the organ. That's the only thing we have to work with, because you're not going to see this screen. The other thing we need to talk about is this metronome. So the reason I'm not hearing the metronome now, because it's only enabled to come on during record. If I hit that and I turn the wheel, now the metronome will hear it because it's enabled during record and play. Okay. There's a count in. There's a three-click count in. Sometimes there's a, every now and then it'll give you a four-click count in. So there's a little bug in that system. Doesn't happen that often though. You can control the volume by dragging your finger from 4 o'clock to 10 o'clock. Kind of weird, but that's the way that works. Uh, it's set at a rate of quarter notes. So every beat you're going to hear a click. Beat 1, beat 2, beat 3. The, the sound you can change. I think stock is this MPC click which is, I don't know, if you like that, whatever. I always kind of like the, the stick. There's the output. You can change to, to whatever you want. You can change it to the head, or any of these eight outputs. We'll leave it on one, two. One, two are the main outs. And yeah, so we have the setup. Let's hit close. All right, I think that's all I wanted to say. Let's record the first part of our Texas Flood Slow Blues. And the first part is going to be a kind of a triplet 
Triple it, triple it. Well, how, wait a minute, nothing's happening. How come? Well, we don't even have a track yet. So I can't do anything until we make a drum track. So that's our next project. So to make a drum track, let's name it drum first. Click track, click A, let's call it drum. Click do it, got our drum track. Let's play it. Nothing's happening, how come? Because we don't have a drum program. We need to load a program. Um, we can look to see maybe there's a program in here. We can turn the wheel, but there's nothing in here. There's other places to look, not just the little square. You can look at this little plug. That's for plugins. And I can look, well, plugin one, what's that? Well, it's a tube synth. Um, yeah, there's a bass line. We'll get to that in a minute, but there's no drum kit there. You can also look in the little keyboard to see if there's a drum kit. No, we have to go load a drum kit. So where do I go load a kit? Back to browse again. And, well, isn't that where we have the SD card internal drive? Yes, it is. But there's another button that says content. Hit that, and oh, look, there's a drum. These are built into the Akai. These come with it. If I hit drums, there's a bunch of drum kits. And that, that fat kit right there actually sounds pretty darn good. So, I mean, there's other kits. You can turn the wheel. I like that fat kit. Let's load it. Hit load. What happened? Nothing happened. No, well, you got to go back to home base. So go to main. And let's play the drums. Still nothing's happening. Why? Uh, well, we still haven't loaded. We found the program yet. Well, we loaded it. Where is it? Well, is it under keys? No. Is it under the plugin? No. How about the little square? Ah, there it is. There's the fat kit. The acoustic kit, fat kit. Now let's play the drums. Great, it works. So now let's talk about this drum pad a little bit. It's touch sensitive, but, and it's not just me, others have said online, it is stiff. You gotta really smack this pad and, you know, I almost sent this back until I discovered, because I have arthritis in my hands, I can't be smashing on this thing. There's a very cool button called full level where you can push, and now I don't have to hit it that hard. Right. For some reason you don't want it full power, there's a half level. It's salmon, so we have to hold shift. And now it's not quite as loud. I prefer it full level though. All right. So that is that. Now we got the kit. Can we now record? Yes, we can. So let's talk about these buttons because we're about to record part. And we're going to record our drum I mean, guys who are really good, they can record it in one take. We're going to use two takes to record our simple drum program. So there's a record button that you can push. Record and play go. That's armed. It's ready to go. All you have to do is push play start. It'll give you a three-click count in, and you go. All right, I'm not going to do it yet. Overdub. So... If you lay down a track and you like it, but you want to add to it another drum part, you hit overdub, and it won't erase the last track or the, the parts underneath it, the last one that you made. If you don't like what you've done, you can hit record, and you get, can get a fresh slate. So that's we're going to use that quite a bit. Um, I'm going to make a mistake and just I want to show you something. So let's let's do it. So the first part of this simple drum track, there is a triplet. Blues has a, a, a triplet feel to it, like a galloping horse. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. So let's record that, or try to record that and see what happens. Two, three. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. What happened? So I messed up. Remember I said I always forget to do this? Oh no, remember I said I'm going to record one bar? 
well, I'm recording four bars, so let's get rid of that. Let's put that to one bar, and let's try that again. Let's. I don't have. I could hit undo to erase that, or I can just hit record and I'll wipe everything out. Clean slate. One, two, three. Triple it. Triple it. Triple it. Triple it. Why is it all messed up? Let me show you what happened. Go to this TC button. So this is time correct. This is really important. So blues has a triplet feel, but it's not set up for a triplet feel. And do you guys know what timing correct is? It's also called quantization or quantize. So when you're tapping in a note, if you miss the beat by a little bit, the computer will grab your messed up beat and it'll pull it perfectly on time. So it allows you to create a perfectly a perfectly synchronized beat, which is good. Sometimes it's too good. Uh, but we have a big problem here because I have kind of a four on the floor type of like a dance music style, like a boom, 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 instead of a boom, 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 a triplet feel. So you got to hit this T button. Now it's going to have a triplet feel. Plus, if you go to the swing function, crank that up to full power, that's 75, it'll have even a more like a shuffle feel to it, which all my blues has that. So that's very important. So let's click do it. And now let's repeat and do this right. So let's hit record. I'll erase everything that I did previously. One, two, three. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. So I missed that last one on purpose. But look how nice that is. That's a nice triplet beat, right? So how do I fix that last missed beat? Well, I mean, I could just I could just wait till it comes there and go boom and hit it in like that. But that's no fun. Let's stop it. Let me introduce this little hashtag function or the grid function. So let's click on that. So now you can actually see where the open hi-hat notes have been placed. And you can see we're missing one right there. So let's explain how this works. By default, you're on this little magnifying glass. So you can blow it up. You can drag it around. And you can also put a note in there by going to the pencil. Now I can place the beat where it's supposed to be. Let's hear it. Triple it, triple it. Why it makes it big like that, I don't know. How do I get rid of that? A couple of different ways. I could hit the undo button. It's gone. How do I put it back? I could hit redo. Is in salmon, I have to hold down shift. It's back. Another way to get rid of it is to erase it. See the eraser right here? Click the eraser. Erase it. It's gone. How do I get it back? Undo that last move. It's back. Another way to get rid of it. Hold down the erase function and click it when it gets there. Okay, you got to just hold it down only at the spot where you want it removed. Let's undo that. Now it's back. Okay, let me show you the drag function. So if I click this little square, I can grab this and drag it around. Okay, let's put it back where it belongs. Great. Let's shut it off. All right, the next thing we need to do is, well, let's get rid of that annoying metronome click. So let's go back to home. I can go to the arrow, or I could have hit main. Let's go back to metronome, and now go to enable. Let's, we don't need the metronome going when we're playing back because we have the, we have the hi-hat going. Click close, and now if I hit play, that's gone. Great. Let's put in the kick. So the kick is going to go kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. If I wanted to, if I didn't feel like putting it in, I could go back to the grid 
and let's go let me see here let's see if we can put this in I'm not very good at this but let's just try it just for fun let's give this a try so I know that it's gonna be a kick kick snare so let's try to put in a kick here kick and then a kick I think it goes here kick kick and let's just try to do the kick let me see what that sounds like actually we can let this loop yep and then the snare is going to go right here I think great now let's do it again I need to I need to pull it this way and let's do the same thing kick Oops. so now I need to put my pencil back so it should be a kick right here here and then a snare right there great so that we could do it that way you don't want to do it that way well let's erase it do it another way drag it back over here erase tool we can do it old school Overdub. Play start. Here we go. Kick, 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 snare. Kick, kick, snare. Kick, kick, snare. Kick, kick, snare. Got it? Okay, great. So that, I mean, that's pretty much it. That's our simple pattern. Let's go back to home base. Now, let us let me show you how to manipulate the overall volume. So you could do it here with this controller. This will control the track, this first knob here, this upper knob. That's one way. Whatever track, that only controls the track though. I could also go here to this triple horizontal bar and go level. I can control it right there. Or I could go to track mix and click, see the acoustic kit right here? And I could pull it down. Now when you're in this program, this button doesn't work. Okay. Now the next question, let's go back to home base. Now how do I control the individual members? Should work now. How do I control the individual members of the kit? Like let's that open hi-hat is way too loud, I think. It's annoying. How do I control that? This is an important one. Pad mix. Pad mix. It's salmon. Hold down the shift. Great, and now you can see there's the kick, snare, and there's that annoying hi-hat. Let's click on that. Let's turn it down. Let's turn it off. Great, I'll bring it up a little. And that, I'm gonna show you a little, a little thing you have to be careful. So I've accidentally, more than once, I've accidentally hit mute here. And then I've, without knowing it, I went back to the main page here, home base. And then I realized, hey, where's my open hi-hat? And I'm like, there's no indication that something's muted. If you go to the triple horizontal bars, there's no mute button that's lit here either. If you go to the track mix, there's no mute button here either. So you have to go back to the scene of the crime. So the scene of the crime or the accident was the pad mix. So shift, pad mix. Ah, look, there's the mute. And you can see the red mute on there as well. Just click it. All right. So that's pretty much how to make a very simple drum beat. But now the problem is 
Well, it's only one bar long. So we want a 12 bar looping type of a deal here. So even better than that, when I'm playing guitar and practicing, I like to know where the, the, the fourth bar ends. Uh, because usually in blues, the key changes at the end of the fourth bar. So let's turn this into a four bar. How do I do that? And then we're going to add something to the fourth bar to tell me that, okay, the key's going to change. But first we have one bar. How do you go to four bars? Click the pencil, times two button. So how many bars you have, I have one bar. I'm going to times it by two. One times two is two bars. Let's go check. Yep, two bars. Let's go back. I have two bars. Two times two is four. Now I have four bars. Let's check. I sure do. So uh, at the fourth bar, the fourth beat, I want to put this in. Just one of those to let me know, okay, the fourth bar is here. Maybe I... Okay, so let's do that. How am I going to do that? Well, let's overdub. Let's record over the top of what we had. So here we go. And now three and go. So this doesn't come into the fourth bar, fourth beat. I can wait around or I can loop the fourth bar. So click start on the loop function. Let's loop that fourth bar. Now watch what happens. See it's in the fourth bar. It's looping, which is great. If I'm in the first bar, this is a very cool wheel right here. The second, the second knob down. I can turn the playhead and fly around. Even in record, it doesn't do anything. So let's put it in the fourth, back to the fourth, and let it loop. So I know this is the fourth bar, so let's put in these toms here. One, two, three. Great. Two, three. Great. Let's put some snare in there, too. Three. That should be able to tell me that a key change is coming. So don't forget to put this back. Right? We don't want it looping anywhere else. Let's check it out and see if that actually worked. So there's... Okay, now we're back to bar one. Let's see what happens in bar four. Or beat four. Nothing. Because I only set it, I only dubbed it in on the fourth measure, fourth bar. So it'll be coming right in a minute. Here it comes. Two, three right here. Very cool. Okay, now let's copy those four bars and make a 12 bar. So click the pencil. We have four bars in there. Four times two. Hit the times two button. That's eight. Let's go check to make sure. Eight. Okay. Eight times two. Whoops, that's too many, isn't it? That's 16. All right, so now I got too many bars. Now what do I do? Go back to the pencil. Delete bars. Um, there's only one sequence. Make sure you're in the right sequence, though. There's only I will only ever use one sequence. What bar do you want to start the deletion? Bar 13. What bar? What's the last bar you want to delete? All of them. Just keep turning the wheel. So bar 13, 14, 15, and 16 are going to be deleted when I click do it. Let's go check. We should have a 12 bar looping blues now. Sure enough. And if you want to fool around with this and make it a little more interesting, we can we can overdub. Let's overdub something in here, make it a little more interesting. Maybe a crash symbol every now and then. So here we go. Maybe, oh, I don't know. How about on the third bar? First beat. And I, I mean, you can play around. I can make that symbol way more interesting, too, and put some 30-second notes in there. Um, I lost track of what I was doing, but throw it in on the seventh bar. Okay, so basically we're done with our, our drum part, our drum track. So great. Now let's put in our bass guitar. 
So we need to put in a new track. So let's go to tracks. Let's go to num find an unused track. I mean, we could put it in number 13 or wherever you want, but I mean, it makes sense to make it the next one. So let's name it. How do you name it? This little A button. Bass. B A S S. Click do it. Great. So let's play the bass. What happened? Well, the the acoustic drum kit is attached to the bass track. So we so we need to find a bass track. Well, where is one? We can look under here. We can look under plugins. Well, there's a plugin one. But that's we already looked at that. That's a synthesizer. How about the little keyboards? No, there's nothing here. Where do we find a bass track? Well, let me show you the stock ones first. So go to browse, just like we did for the drums. We're in the stock drums that come with the MPC one. There's the instruments that goes go to instruments, and there's a bass line right there. So if we click open the bass line and then load default. It'll load all these XPLs, all these different programs, and we can go play with those. I think that was already loaded, actually, by default. But let's go look. And now we have, no, that's what we had. The plugin one was the tube synth we looked at. Plugin two is the bass line. Great. Um, so let's play the bass. Well, why does it sound so weird? Because you can't play the bass where you play the drums. You have to go to something called notes. So if you're taking notes, this you want to write this down. This is an important place. Click shift, it's salmon. Click notes. Now let's play that stock bass. All right, I mean, that's, that's not the greatest. Uh, we can go back. Let's go to main. Is there another program? If you go to, if you go down here to presets, well, there's the thump one, and I haven't even played with all these. The thwack. Let's see what that sounds like. So let's go look at that under notes again. Is that what's that? Yeah, kind of thwacks it, I guess. Those are kind of lame, if you ask me. <laughs> so I actually went on the internet. I wasn't happy with those. So let's go back to browse. So I went to a website I'll put up right now, and I purchased a MPC expansion pack, and it's got some good bases in it. They're under expansions. And actually, these I haven't played with these too much, but these come with the MPC one if you register it. It's kind of a pain, but you if you register it, you can download these after you go through a bunch of hoops. I bought this electric bass program right here. And these are pretty loud, so let me turn these down if I remember. Well, actually, they turn it down too much. Okay, there's... All right, so let's just throw the first one in here. It doesn't matter. Load it up. And let's lay this down to help our, our jam track. Let's go see, go to home base, and let's play the bass. Well, there's nothing there. How come? Well, I didn't assign the program to the bass track, so let's go find it. Is it in plugins? No. Is it under this drum track thing? No. There's the drum track, though. How about under the keyboards? Yes, it's under the keyboards. There's the bass, the Astro Bass Clean. Remember, we can't play it here. We have to go to Notes. Shift, notes, now let's play it. All right, so that's a bass. So let's play it. Now, how do we record this in there? So you can't piece this together. We could go to the grid and we could program it in that way, but I prefer just to play, to go right through the 12 bars and play it and program it in that way. That's the easiest way for me. Maybe you can leave a comment below if you know a better way to do it. Um, but let's let's overdub it. Now, because we've started a new track, we don't have to overdub. We can hit record, to because this is a brand new bass track, and let's lay it down here. 
Oh, oh, let me stop. Let me make sure that I have the octave set correctly and the key set correctly. And let's actually go through this for a minute. So it's on chromatic by default. We can go to notes and it gives me three octaves. So it's easier for me to play it if it's in chromatic. I mean, it's it's your preference. I like it there. Chords doesn't work. For the organ, it works. The chords do. You just hit a chord in it. But for the bass, it doesn't sound good. I just leave it on chromatic, but you can play with it. Um, we're going to do this in the key of G. I mean, you could do it in any key you want. But here's the very important, right? Here's get your notes out. Write this down. This is the root note, and blues is one, four, five, most of them. There's the four, there's the five. Oh, sorry, there's the one, there's the four, there's the five. You gotta make sure they are in the right octaves. So you always want to make the one, the root note here. Let's see, start on the root, it says, and there's different options, but it's by default, it start on the root. So you want to get that as low as possible. Um, so there it's too high. I mean, I can put it up at three octaves. It's so high, I can't even register anything. So you want to make this as low as possible until it's too low. It'll say zero after the key, like A zero or G zero. Too low, I need to go up one octave and now I have it just right. Okay, great. Let's. Let's lay this down. So hit record, it's the very first take. So don't worry about the playhead here. That's gonna snap back to zero when I hit play. One, two, three. Okay, simple as that. Let me stop it. Now, on the ninth bar, I messed it up on purpose so we can fix it. So let's play it. Let's go check. Now use the second wheel down to speed around. Let's go to that ninth bar and see where I messed up. I think I hit that note by mistake. That's wrong. So how do I get rid of that? Since it's a wrong note, it's really easy. Go back. I don't even have to be in record or overdub. I just need to hold a race down, hold that wrong note down. It's gone. Let's check it. Great. Now, this note needs to be in there, so let's go back again. Actually, I need to go to overdub now to record that note in. I could go to the grid function to do that, but let's do it here. Let's click overdub, play. It's going to take me back to bar one, but I'm going to speed all the way up to bar eight and fix it. That was the note right there. The rest of it is perfect. So yeah, the bass track is down. Uh, let's go. Let's go back to home bass. Uh, we could transpose this now. Watch. Let me let it play. If I hit transpose, let's say you don't want to play in G anymore. You can take it up to G sharp. Okay, take it up to A. 
I can take it down to F. I can't go too far because if I go further, then notes don't come out. So but let's leave it in G. So that's it. The bass is in. Now, how do I adjust the volume of the drums and the bass? Well, we kind of know how to do that. So we can go to this little triple horizontal bar thing. And now the bass track is here. So let's say we don't want it that loud. You can click on that. Just lower it. I lowered it too much. I like it full power. That's fine. Um, I can mute it. Could solo it through the headphones. I can pan it. Where else can I do this? You remember the other place? Where else can I adjust the volumes? Um, right here, track mix. And I like this better actually. So where is it? Uh, there's the acoustic kit. There's the bass kit right there. So I can mess around with it here. Okay, so let's go back to home base. That's it. Let's put a organ track in now when we're done. All right, let's do the organ track exactly the same way we did the bass track. So go to track, find an empty track. It's organ. Let's name it organ. The track three is empty. Organ. Oops. See the, the touchpad's a C plus, B minus, it, it misses a lot, so you can't type too fast. Great, click do it. All right, uh, there's no organ in here. Let's go, or I mean, you could look, you could look through the same places. I mean, it's, there's drums. We can attach anything to this, but let's go, let's go find an organ track, hit browse. I mean, we could have used some of the synth, the, uh, the instruments, uh, we could have put electric in there or tube synth. You can play with those. I bought an MPC expansion down here, Vintage Organ Sounds, which kind of expensive, but it's got some nice sounds. This is the one I have to turn down because it's loud. Oh, it's not. Um, I turned it down too far, didn't I? Oh, I guess it's not that loud. There's one called the rock organ. I really like this rock organ. There it is right there. It's got a long little demo. But um, let's load that. Hit the load button. Great. Let's go back to main. And let's play the organ. Well, we got to load the, we got to put the, the program to the organ track. So let's go find it. Is it under plugins? No, it's under the little key, the MPC button, that little keyboard thing. Oops, what did I do? There we go. Um, what did I do? Don't know what I did. Um, let's find it. Where is it? There it is. Let's play it. Why isn't it playing? Well, it's because, remember, it's under Notes. So hold down the Shift key. Go to Notes. Let's hear it. Seems like these keys aren't as responsive. I don't know if it's the program, but this is definitely more finicky than the bass program. Set the key of G. Same thing, set the octave. Okay, that's too low. Keep the root note as low as possible. Now the chord function, if I go to chromatic chords, that's kind of cool. Let's see, there's the four, there's the one, there's the four, five. I mean, I could just put that in there if I wanted, but let's do it a little more fancy. Let me go back to chromatic and let's lay it down. How do I record this now? It's a new track. I can hit record. We're going to put it right over the other tracks. Hit play start. One, two, three.
corners to it. Okay, I, I didn't make any mistakes on that one, but if you did, you would fix it the exact same way we did the base. Let's go look at it though. Let's go to back to home base. Let's look at it under the grid, see what it looks like. And let me show you a little, oh, I guess sometimes it doesn't show up, but it's not showing up, is it? You have to hit the up arrow and hit the grid again, and then it comes back. So there's a little bug in that. I went to the kind of the, the zoom function, and we can see what it looks like. You can zoom it up. And the, the controls work. If I want to drag something, let's drag this one out of here. So I messed that up. So let's get that back where it belongs. Let's see, did I put it right? See, it's off a little. Let's blow that up. See if I can drag it back a little bit better. There we go. All right. Well, I think that's pretty much the story. I mean, we have our 12 bar blues, our slow blues. We put in a drum track. Let's go see it. There's the drum track. We put in a bass guitar track and we just put in an organ track and yeah. We made this, and I think that's probably enough. So I hope this video helped somebody out there, some newbie like I was not too long ago. And as I said, a Kai, there is no manual for this standalone box. Uh, Akai makes a manual, but that's for the software that you can put on your PC or Mac. It explains that, and that's not even very good. So I have not found any instructions on this at all. There's a couple of YouTube videos for the beginner, but they're just not complete. So I hope this finds a little niche, and I hope people like it. See you in the next video.